Hello everyone and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for December 19th, 2022. It's that time of the week and the last time this year that we will get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Um, so, I'm Jeff, or Jepler, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development uh, is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and uh, great folks like, say, Scott and Katni and Dan, uh, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. Um, we hold the meeting in the CircuitPython Dev Text channel and the CircuitPython Voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes document, there's a link to a calendar you can add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. To receive those notifications, ask a, uh, well, anybody you see to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. That is, uh, ask any administrator or moderator to do that. Uh, there is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. If you're watching this after the fact, there should be a link in the uh, video or podcast notes, and it will have timestamps to go along with the video so you can skip to whatever part is most interesting to you. This meeting tends to run 50, uh, 45 to 60 minutes, so we think the option to skip around is handy. After the meeting, we will post a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel of the Adafruit Discord. Check the pin messages to find the latest notes doc and add the, your notes for the next meeting anytime you like. And if you wish to participate but can't attend live, please remember you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for the host to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. Up right after this is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community and a preview of the Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. It's a statistical overview of the whole project by the numbers, separate from what we're up to individually. Up after that is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity for everyone to highlight the good things folks are doing and take the time to recognize awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. That's another round robin where we get a chance to sync up on what we've each been up to. We invite everybody to take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the past week or since the last meeting and what you'll be up to in the coming week or until the next meeting. And then the final part, if we need it, is called In the Weeds. It's an opportunity for long form discussion that can either result from a status updates topic, but more often it's something that you've identified ahead of time as uh, just being a discussion where you want to engage with the community to answer, uh, to, to like resolve, how are we gonna do this or how should I do that? Anyway, and that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will start us on community news. So more on this in just a moment, but here are some top items in news for CircuitPython. Um, first up, the issue uploading UF2 files with macOS 13.0 Ventura has been fixed by Apple in version 13.1. Uploading UF2 files with macOS 13.0 has been fixed in version 13.1. Not all is perfect though. It's still the case that UF2 uploading does not work on NRF 52840 boards that use an older UF2 bootloader. You need version 0.6.2 and newer. On these boards, the bootloader appears to fail quickly, allowing no time to copy the UF2. And there is a link to some instructions to update your bootloader. Uh, otherwise, on these NRF 52840 boards, including the CircuitPython, the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, the Feather NRF 52840, and the Itsy Bitsy NRF 52840, the only way to load a UF2 file is on a non-Ventura computer. And it is also still true that copying .hex files larger than one meg doesn't work, for example, on the micro bit. And uh, yeah, check out the notes doc for more links relative to that. But um, it is nice to see that the big main problem that affected a lot of people has been solved. Next up, our uh, Adafruit's uh, iPhone app, PyLeap, gets a major update now with Wi-Fi transfer and more. A major update, the free Adafruit iOS app simplifies downloading code files and assets and transferring them to an Adafruit device using BLE or Wi-Fi. And then next up, 
the best part of the newsletter is community projects. It's always a great, um, great way to see what other people are up to and get your own idea juices flowing. So this week is a runner's headlight, the MetaNerd Headlight Mark II. The Mark I was a success in the sense that it was made from entirely leftover parts of unrelated earlier projects, but I wasn't really satisfied with the design. Particularly the area around the two close range LEDs bothered me. I felt like it could be a little more compact. Inner Mark II. Not only is it physically smaller and uses less power, it also looks much more professionally designed. It has the same control and the same mix of close and long range lights. Uh, and it is controlled by an Adafruit Trinket M0 running Surya Python. And there is a link to Instagram, which I guess doesn't preview in um, Discord, so you'll have to check that out using your Instagram app. Probably. So, what is the CircuitPython weekly newsletter, you may ask? It is a community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. And uh, to subscribe, you'd go to the front page of adafruitdaily.com. But uh, we also want to emphasize uh, the community run aspect of it. So to contribute your own news or project, you can edit next week's draft directly on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And also for those of you that do tag CircuitPython on Mastodon, a lot of us are uh, trying to keep an eye on that, but uh, your surest route is to go the pull request or the email. Uh, that's what I recommend. And a little bird told me that next week's uh, issue will come out a day late due to the holidays. So just be aware of that. All right, and next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And this is a report of information over the previous seven days, and that particularly means that any changes made today are not included in the report. And as we have our little holiday break, that means we'll miss acknowledging some people who were working uh, during the upcoming week or so. And uh, if we ever miss you, we apologize. We appreciate all of your work. But now to the numbers. Uh, overall, this is across all CircuitPython related Adafruit repositories on GitHub. We had 24 pull requests merged by 18 authors. Uh, so uh, thanks to some names that are less familiar to me, Luis Malhadas, E. Carozo, Happy Me 531 Vlad AK, uh, Spavlot, and you know, just to everybody, whether it's your first pull request with us or your hundredth, we really appreciate uh, the way that the community comes together and makes CircuitPython and the libraries better. Uh, reviewers wise, we had seven, which is not a bad number. And thanks to our less frequent and outside of Adafruit organization uh, reviewer, Ask Patrick W. So it was nice to see some uh, reviews come in from the community. And I always like to emphasize that those are official GitHub reviews, and we don't uh, directly name the people who are just participating on issues and pull requests, providing information and good feedback. Um, and we appreciate those people too, we just don't list you all out. And uh, that brings me to the last overall number, which is that we had 22 closed issues by 12 people and 19 open by 17 people. So it's nice to see us come down a few in open issues and also the number of people participating um, is very good to see. And with that, I will ask Dan to let us uh, know what is up with the core of CircuitPython this week. Okay, thank you, Jeff. So in the core the past week, there were 11 pull requests merged, and I merged a couple more this morning, because this is as of last night. And there were seven authors, uh, notably uh, Bablock B is probably new, and three reviewers. There are 21 open pull requests. Nine of those are drafts, which are often awaiting um, USB uh, numbers or some other things like that. Uh, there were 11 issues closed by six people and six open by six people. It's nice to see that we closed more than we opened. There are 578 open issues. Out of that, there aren't any open issues to, to add anything to 7.3.x. There are nine open issues for 8.0, which is a big improvement on the way it's been recently. And there should be uh, six or seven soon. Um, there are 27 open for uh, following on in 8xx and two open in 9.0.0. Those are 
usually changes. Those are changes that are incompatible with 800. So they, they are deferred until 900. Uh, 20 issues are labeled as library issues. Often that's a request for a library. 511 long-term issues, nine support issues. We could probably close a bunch of those. And three uh, third-party issues, which means they're awaiting some action by a third party that we have no control over. And zero issues not assigned a milestone. We've been good about triaging. Okay, that's it. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, next, as Katni is out today, I have asked our own foamy guy to tell us about the libraries. Go ahead. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, this section covers the CircuitPython libraries. On GitHub, you'll find those all uh, with the name Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of the library. Uh, this is the Python layer of the code that makes CircuitPython projects work. Uh, this week uh, in the numbers, we had seven pull requests merged by six authors. Uh, a few of the names Jeff mentioned before uh, also were unfamiliar to me, so I think those folks may be uh, newer, uh, Vladak and Spav Lot. Um, so thank you to those folks, and of course, thank you to all the rest of our authors uh, whose names I do recognize. Um, appreciate everyone who supports the libraries by submitting uh, pull requests, as always. Uh, we had four reviewers, um, so thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, amongst the pull requests that were merged this week, uh, the oldest ones were about 40 days old, and the newest ones were just uh, one day old. So we jumped on a couple of them real quick, as well as taking out some of the uh, older ones. Um, that does leave us with 43 open pull requests, uh, at least as of yesterday, like was uh, mentioned before. Uh, I happen to know a few of those are also tackled because I've been working on pull requests this morning. Um, there are uh, eight uh, closed issues this week, or there were eight closed, is closed issues uh, by five people, and there were 13 issues opened by 12 people. Uh, there are a total of uh, 596 open issues, of which uh, 95 of those are labeled good first issues. So those are ones that have been identified as um, not needing a particularly in-depth level of knowledge or experience. Those are great for folks who want to get started um, becoming involved in the project. If that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, uh, head over to circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you'll find a list of all of the open issues and pull requests, as well as uh, opportunities to filter them by that good first issue label. Uh, and that's what we've got in library land this week. Thanks, Jeff. All right, thank you. And rounding out this section of uh, statistics is Melissa to tell us about Blinka. Hello. So Blinka is our uh, CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. This week we had six pull requests merged uh, by five authors and two reviewers. There are currently six open pull requests. There were three closed issues by three people and zero new ones opened, uh, leaving a net of 86 open issues. There were 17,558 PyPI downloads in the last week, 7,181 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently at 100 boards. Um, so we've got quite a, we're getting a little more activity than normal, but uh, looking good. Thank you. And with that, we are ready to head on to the first round robin section called Hug Reports. And uh, because I was a little bit busy and disjointed this morning, I will start it off uh, with only a group hug. I know that there are some people that I really should give individual hugs to, but I didn't um, unfortunately take the time to write it down. And with that, I will pass it on to Dan, who has a bit more substantial thing to say. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, Jeff, uh, for some debugging ideas for some mysterious errors that I will discuss more in status reports. Um, thanks to Deshipu, Naradoc, and Carter for helping on help with Circuit Python. There was particularly there was somebody who had kind of a multi-day issue, and uh, they worked successfully with that person. That was great. And thanks to our translators who continue to keep up with uh, messages that need translation. As 800 evolves, we do a lot of churning of the messages. So thank you, translators. OK. All right. Uh, next up is Deshipu and then DJ Devon 3. OK. Thank you to you, Jeff, for, for uh, all the camera support code and your help with that. 
thank you to Dan for the reviews uh, on the pull requests. They were very fast and very uh, timely. And uh, thank you to Tim for uh, doing the deep dives. Okay. All right. I'm really happy you got that camera working. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that news when it uh, was finally going. Anyway, uh, all right. TJ Devon 3, you're up next. And then Foamy Guy. Yeah, that camera was really cool to see, Dishipu. Uh, first bug is to Noah and Pedro for live streaming how to add custom supports in Cura during 3D Hangouts. And I'm brand new to 3D printing, had no idea how to do supports, and they like did this whole entire segment on it, so it was awesome. Uh, hug to C. Grover and Foamy Guy for their encouragement and ideas, and obviously Foamy Guy for constantly streaming. Uh, to Blitz City DIY for an excellent ongoing vlog series on her quantizer project. So it's really neat to get like status updates as as she's learning. Um, so I'm learning as she's learning, and it's that's a gr that's a great format. Uh, a hug to Joey Castilla for an amazing low power time based Christmas tree user guide. And user guides user pages don't get a lot of attention, but I. Figured I'd throw that one out because he put a lot of effort. I don't know if any any of you read it. It's long and it's very well documented. And a hug to all the developers, reviewers, beta testers, and helpers who do all the really hard work behind the scenes to make Circuit Python an amazing and enjoyable language to use. And a hug to everyone who's working on switching scripts from Twitter to Mastodon uh, recently. And happy holiday hug to everyone. Thank you. Uh, next up is Foamy Guy, and then Maker Melissa is on deck. Right. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, this week, some hug reports for me. A uh, hug report for Katni for some recent chats about setting up live streams as well as life generally. A uh, hug report for DJ Devin for sharing uh, his efforts on the Cowbell project as well as offering to send hardware to myself and some other uh, members of the community. I'm looking forward to playing with this during some time off that I have coming up. A uh, hug report to uh, C. Grover and uh, D. Gloud, uh, David, for sharing some prior work around color uh, gradients, both some uh, example libraries as well as a uh, pointer to some projects that did some interesting stuff with gradients. Um, hug report for uh, Trebnose and the PyLeap developers. It's very cool to see uh, the new Wi-Fi support uh, being added to PyLeap. Um, definitely always excited to see more doors opening up for opportunities in mobile. Uh, development. So that's really cool to see. Um, and then a group hug to everyone. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. And uh, cheers to another great year with CircuitPython. Uh, this was kind of my uh, first year uh, working at least part-time uh, on Mondays on the project, and it's been a great year, and I'm uh, looking forward to another one. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tim. Uh, next up is Melissa. Then I have some notes to read from other folks. Uh, let's see. I just... Um... Oh, here it is. Uh, I wanted to get back to uh, PT and Lamore for being so kind uh, with a when a friend of mine uh, passed away about a week and a half ago, and I hugged uh, Katni for a nice discussion and uh, group hugged everyone else. Thank you, Melissa. All right, I'll read notes from a few people, and then up after that is Scott. So uh, Mark, Gambler21, writes, group hug, and happy holidays, everyone. Tammy Makes Things, who is missing the meeting, uh, has a hug report to Katni for some recent chats and a group hug with warm holiday wishes to everyone. All right, now we come to Scott. Hello. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, first, a hug to my partner, Becca, for being an awesome mom and making Ari, uh, my son, as comfortable as possible on the plane, uh, two planes, uh, out here to my in-law's place in Michigan. Uh, hug to Daradoc. Uh, Dan, DJ, Devin, and Dishipu. Uh, Dan left himself out of the the help uh, in the help with CircuitPython channel. So thank you to all those folks for really being so helpful to so many people. And, and like Dan caught, uh, Carter is also super helpful. And then uh, finally, a hug report to Trev Nose for the new PyLeap release on iOS. And also a shout out to Blitz City DIY Liz for doing a lot of the testing of PyLeap to make sure it's... Uh, working pretty well before it gets released. So um, congrats to Trev, and I'm excited to see PyLeap and Glider really grow into their own in, in the next year. Um, so thanks to Blitz City, uh, to Liz and Katni for helping move that along as well. 
Thank you, Scott. Last up, I have notes from Tectric. Tectric has a hug report to Katni for an excellent discussion about personal life and a group hug. And next, we will move on to status updates. Status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. I'll start and then go through the list in the document order to give everybody a chance to participate. When I call on you, take a couple of moments to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. It's also an opportunity to provide quick trip, quick tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on, but if a discussion looks like it's going to be long, we will move it to in the weeds. And with that, I will get started. Um, I felt like I didn't really have a lot of activity again this past week. The main thing that I did was I um, made a pull request to revert an update of the protomatter library, which is what makes RGB matrix work. Uh, by doing this reversion, it works again on the ESP32 S3 microcontrollers with PS RAM, uh, but we still need to, and by we I mean me, still need to investigate what it takes to make the current version work uh, on the ESP32 S3 with PS RAM as well as all the other microcontrollers. Um, the reason has to do with um, the current version uses the LCD controller peripheral to drive the matrix and that saves more CPU time for your CircuitPython code, but it means that there are some things around allocating the peripherals um, and allocating the memory that are different. And there's just a bug in there that uh, needs to be found and fixed. And it's most likely a bug in CircuitPython, not a bug in ProtoMatter, but at this point I can't ruin, can't rule anything out. Um, the other thing that I did was further fixes to showing the special GAI error exception for name lookup failures. GAI, I think, stands for Get Address Information. Um, this exception I added a few weeks ago for compatibility with standard Python, but there were cases in which that exception wouldn't be thrown and a more generic OS error would be thrown instead. I think those are all fixed now. Um, in any case, it's better. Uh, this week, my goals are to work on 800 bugs, as well as adding mouse support to the next keyboard guide. And that will consist of one new page of research, because uh, the keyboard, the keyboard, the mouse plugs into the keyboard, and then the keyboard processes the mouse information and can send it back to the computer. And so the new research is, well, what does, what does the mouse communicate? How does the keyboard communicate the mouse stuff? And then I'll need to update the program and the program explanation to uh, go through and show people how that works. Um, Noe and Pedro and I were working or, or hoping that a 3D printed project with the uh, Feather Scorpio would be able to come out before Christmas. It looks like that is almost certainly not going to happen, so we'll need a fresh idea of a project for that after the new year. So if you have a good idea for eight LED strips and a 3D print, you should share that with us. Um, and finally, I have been looking for an alternative online calendar viewer for the weekly meeting calendar. The existing one disappeared earlier in the year, probably when the Heroku free tier was discontinued. So if you know of a website that you can embed an iCal calendar in and it will show the meeting times in your local time zone, drop me a note. Um, I have found one thing that looked like an alternative, but it doesn't show it just shows the, the time zone that it says in the file. It doesn't show that translated to your local time. Uh, anyway, with that, I'll hand things on to Dan, and we'll continue in the notes document order. So keep an eye on that, and we'll go through these. Hello. OK, thanks. All right, so I fixed about four issues, or I was counting pull requests uh, in the past week for CircuitPython. Some of them were not what they appeared to be. <laughs> which often happens. Um, I looked at a bunch of other issues, some of which I couldn't reproduce or I needed more information. So those are still open, um, except I did close some that I couldn't, that seem to be fixed now. I pushed some issues forward to 8xx because they don't really need to be fixed for 800. They're not showstoppers. Um, see, uh, I will uh, do a beta 6 release probably this week by about Wednesday. Um, uh, it'll have the settings.toml changed from .nth to settings.toml. 
and possibly some other features. Uh, there's uh, Scott just submitted a pull request, which we hope we can get in by then. So anyway, there'll be, I, I would like to have a before Christmas uh, beta six. Um, I'm, now I'm investigating some mysterious crashes and oddities. Uh, originally it was some crashes that had to do with uh, compiling uh, debug builds. And it looked like it might be related to display IO, but it wasn't at all. Um, it had to do with setting various compiler optimization flags. It was really complicated to do this because I tried to do a regular bisect and that didn't work. And I finally, I did kind of a manual bisect. Um, and recently in the past day or two, some other exception handling issues have come up, which also are mysterious. And they all, these all may be related or maybe not. So we'll try to find out. So I'm continuing to work on that. Okay. All right. Thanks, Stan. Uh, next up is Deshipu and then DJ Devon 3. So I'm coming back to some of my old projects because I have some free time before Christmas now. Uh, I finally, I mentioned that already, I finally got the camera shield for the Lolin S2 Mini working with the dress code. And uh, I have a similar shield for the Pipico. Raspberry Pi Pico coming up, hopefully just before Christmas. So I, I hope that will make it a bit more easy for people to use uh, cameras. You don't need to have that Kaluga board anymore. I also plan to use this uh, shield uh, on, on my uh, tiny spider robots. And I had a problem where I'm using all the PWM uh, channels on the robot already for the servos and the camera needs uh, one more WM channel to provide the external clock but you can actually get modules that already generate the external clock with a crystal on the board so I, I uh, added uh, I made that uh, op uh, pin optional basically in the current ESP32 camera uh, library, so now you can use also those words that already have uh, the external clock and then you don't use the, the extra PWM uh, channel. Uh, I got my stenotype uh, working with the Plover HID, uh, which is much nicer than the standard uh, serial protocol for Pro Plover, because you no longer have to select which uh, serial device is going to use it, it just detects the HID device uh, automatically when you connect it, which is much nicer. Uh, I got the Pew Pew, uh, that's the 8x8 uh, game console thing. Uh, library is working on the uh, Arturos uh, Solder Party Flux uh, game console, uh, of course, and, and Circuit Python support for it uh, was already there. Uh, some month ago, I think, uh, but I haven't uh, talked about that yet. Uh, I made the uh, driver for the gesture sensor. It's very nice because uh, you can make uh, things, do things depending on how you wave hands in front of it. So uh, it's, it supports nine different gestures you can make and uh, you can for instance, you can make a robot do different different things. I'm still working on the, the on those spider robots of mine, uh, and I made just a, a version that has uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico W, because uh, among other things, that's going to uh, use much more PWM channels for much more servers, but also. Uh, I hope that uh, some other things will be easier with that. And uh, yeah, and I made a, a little bit of progress with the electronic ocarina thing uh, that I'm uh, working on. I still don't didn't make it use MIDI, but uh, it has a built-in speaker now, so you can just play it uh, without connecting to the computer. And that's all. Thank you. All right, I think that's plenty. 
Uh, Alright, next up is DJ Devon 3, and up after that is Foamy Guy. Hello! I spent my entire weekend learning everything I could about Fusion 360 and Cura Slicer. I just got a new Ender 3 S1 Pro uh, and learned that printing PLA is a piece of cake compared to Pet G. My goal was to 3D print orange step switches for the TR Cowbell because that specific color is unavailable from Adafruit. The step switch caps require a precision of 0.12 millimeters and it took 22 revisions before I could get it just right. Uh, Fusion 360 automatically appends file save version numbers so if you really want to know how many times you fail before succeeding use Fusion 360. The PB86 step switch 3D model was submitted as a PR this morning and it was added to Adafruit CAD parts and there's a URL for that. Uh, and happy holidays! The first batch of version 1.2 TR cowbells should be arriving today or tomorrow to all the circuit pythonistas who wanted one. Um, some kits are missing a few extras such as uh, an SSD 1306 display or an encoder knob or a dip socket because I started running out of supplies and was trying to cobble things together. But all the core components to get all the boards working are included. Uh, those who wanted a kit versus a fully assembled board was about 50%, which kind of surprised me. I thought everyone would want a fully assembled board, uh, which would require tons and tons of soldering. So I kind of felt lucky that people were like, hey, I, I'll, I'll take a kit. And I was like, yes, no, I don't have to do all that soldering. Awesome. Just ship it. Um, uh, one lucky person will receive a magnetic micro B plug stuck in the end of the Pico because I forgot to take it out before packaging. I'm currently designing the TR Cowbell 1.3 with RGB LEDs and other some new other features that I'm going to try and keep secret the best I can because it's really cool and I'm really excited about it. And I'm looking forward to feedback from the version 1.2 owners to make the, ex the next iteration even better. And I hope everyone has a nice holiday season and I will see everyone again in 2023. All right, thank you. Next up is Foamy Guy, and on deck is Maker Melissa. All right, uh, the past week or so, I've been working on some PR reviews and testing. Uh, a couple of the ones that I found particularly interesting this week were in the Ethernet library. Uh, there was a fix that allowed it to work with my router, uh, which it turns out my router, I think, does something kind of weird, and so I was having to do it in this weird specific way before to get it to work, but the new version uh, seems to work reliably in my setup, so that was cool uh, to test that out and discover. Uh, the other one, uh, which I thought was neat that I looked into this week, or, or uh, one of the other ones that I thought was neat, I should say, um, was in the logging library. Uh, there was a new feature added to allow you to uh, set up multiple handlers, so if you wanted to log to multiple places at once, um, you can now do that. So if you want to write to a file but also print, uh, or send it to the internet and also print and put it in a file as well, you can now uh, set up multiple handlers to make that happen. Um, this past week, I also uh, cookie cut uh, and published the first version of a library with some helper functions for generating uh, gradient color palettes. I have a link there to GitHub in the notes document. Um, I'll get it added to the community bundle soon. Uh, there's no PR there yet, but I do have that on my radar for this week. Um, so far, I've been able to use the palettes that it generates with uh, display.io bitmaps, as well as uh, vector IO shapes. Um, and then uh, moving out of the display realm a bit, I've also managed to use them on NeoPixel strips, uh, both setting it on the strip directly so that your uh, full strip can just gradient from, uh, you know, one color to another to another. Um, uh, but I've also been working on some updated variations of some of the animations to use those uh, color palettes inside of the color, uh, inside the animations as well. Um, throughout the upcoming weeks, um, a couple of the things that I have uh, that I'm planning to look into, I picked up this barcode scanner uh, that has USB and UART a little couple weeks back, I think it was. Um, I have unboxed it, but not powered it up yet. Um, so I'm looking to jump into that, get it hooked up, hopefully to a CircuitPython device. Um, and ideally what I want to do with it is create some sort of little handheld toy that interacts with barcodes. Um, I recently discovered a product uh, called Scanners. I think it's Radica maybe or something like that, little electronics 
uh, toy that was released in the early 2000s that was like a virtual pet where you scanned barcodes and it uh, let you find stuff for your pet or something like that. Um, I missed it when that came out, but after discovering it uh, more recently on a YouTube rabbit hole, uh, I thought it was fascinating, and I've always been intrigued by barcodes, so I am interested in uh, trying my hand at creating a similar sort of uh, thing uh, powered by CircuitPython. Um, I will be building uh, and playing with uh, DJ Devon's cowbell uh, that was just mentioned a few minutes ago, um, so I'm looking forward to getting that and putting it together and playing with it. Um, and then uh, probably lots more stuff going on, including uh, ample video games, uh, but I'm not sure of any other specifics just yet. Uh, but I will be around and streaming some um, while I am off of work for the next uh, couple of weeks, starting next week. So I'll be around if anybody has anything interesting uh, that they think I'd be uh, interested in. Feel free to hit me up. Um, but other than that, that's all I have going on. Thanks. All right. And once again, I say that sounds like plenty. Uh... We are getting close to the uh, end of status updates, so one last reminder that if you have a topic for In the Weeds, please go ahead and add that. Uh, but now we're ready to hear from Maker Melissa, and after that, uh, I'll read Tammy, and then we'll go to Scott. Hi. Uh, so uh, over the I wasn't here last week, so over the last couple of weeks, I had taken some time off because a close friend had passed away rather suddenly, and I refactored. Uh, uh, during that time, like uh, last few days plus before that, I'd refactored uh, USB workflow on code.circuitpython.org to make uh, use of the file system access API for a more consistent experience. And I've been working on polishing up um, with handling things like partial connections and the ability to run code via the REPL. And uh, this week I'm going to finish up the USB workflow and uh, start working on integrating web serial ESP tool into the main circuitpython.org site for the ESP boards. And that's where I'm at. All right, thank you. All right, Tammy's notes say, spent last week buried in day job work, not much time for CircuitPython. Hoping to get back to my NRPN extension to the Adafruit MIDI library and the project I'm intending to use it for this week. Trying to reset my schedule for 2023 to make more space for the things that matter to me outside of my day job. And next up is Scott, and then I'll round it out with notes from Tectric. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Um, last week was a split week due to traveling on Wednesday, but Ari did well on the planes, so that was good. Um, since I only had four days of work left before the holidays, I went heads down on debugging the ULP Deep sleep issues on the S3, I found an IDF issue that was causing me trouble. Um, it's a super common bug that we usually have, which is you reset um, a pin and it resets everything, even though it shouldn't reset everything. Um, so I found a place in the IDF that that ha uh, happened, and I just made a PR to the ESP IDF upstream as well. Um, it's already in our copy, um, the fixes. And so I made a pull request um, just in the last hour for the rework of the coprocessor API that uh, Microdev had done. And so that's now out for review, and I'm hoping hoping <laughs> to hear back from uh, Jeff and Microdev and maybe Dan if, if need be so that we can get that in by tomorrow, uh, which is my last day before the holidays. Um, the other thing I want to do before I go is write the kickoff post for CircuitPython 2023, uh, which is our, for folks who are new, it's our annual kind of like, hey, let us know what you think like longer, broader goal, longer term, broader goals of CircuitPython should be, um, kind of what do you want to see this year? And so uh, I'll write that up and schedule it to go out publicly on New Year's Day. Um, and maybe I'll have a quick uh, in the weeds topic about timing for that. Um, although I'm, I know Katniss input would be good, even though she's not here. Uh, but we could talk about that briefly. I'll add that in a sec. Um, so yeah, I'm working today and tomorrow on the goal of merging the coprocessor API stuff in, and then I'm back the January 3rd, which is the next meeting. Um, since folks are talking about what they're kind of doing in the off time, when I'm visiting family um, this whole time, so I'll be doing that. But um, I have the site law-law.org that I did last year. 
um, that is meant to kind of rearrange how all of the information about state legislatives um, bills and stuff is organized. Uh, it's kind of my interest in how laws get created and codified and stuff. So uh, there's a new state legislative session starting on the 9th. Um, and so I'm kind of dusting off the, the voila Python scripts that do all the fetching and, and uh, organization of that. Uh, the main thing that I'm excited about for this session is I made a request uh, wrapper that caches past responses. One of the challenges that I had was like, I want to store the original copies of the URLs that I'm fetching, um, even if the, the data coming back to me has been updated. So I made a request wrapper that would basically allow me to, every time I run it and tell it to fetch a new thing, it will be able to, I'll be able to like look back kind of in an archive style, at like everything that the API had passed back to me when I run it, which would be good in case I need to like reproduce things or fix bugs retroactively and stuff. Um, so that's, that's these next two days and then my off time for me. All right. Thank you, Scott. And I will round out the section by reading the notes from Tectric, who's text only today. Last week, implemented the draft PR for status display and community bundle updates in the weekly meeting report. Took my Embedded Systems 2 grad course exam. Thanks everyone in the community for teaching me a lot about the material and also giving me the confidence to enroll despite not taking the prerequisite. Very excited for principles and applications of sensors for engineering next semester sounds fun and relevant to making cool robot friends. Helped keep Adabot running smoothly over the holidays, fixing a bug with displaying draft PRs that was implemented recently, and built roughly 15 circuit Pythonicas and now sending them to friends and family. This week, reviewing a security warning for Adabot. Probably the best not to share specifics, but I don't think it's an issue for us based on the described risk, so I don't think changes are necessary. Happen to discuss privately with any of the maintainers who want a more detailed explanation. See the security tab in the Adabot repository for more information. And finally, uh, Tectric is headed to Nevada for the holidays, so they're logging off this week or until the next weekly meeting, but we'll have the dev laptop with them. Please don't hesitate to ping me if any CI stops working, but things are stable for now. And with that, we are going to roll over to In the Weeds. And let me just get back to my blurb about what In the Weeds is. All right. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussion that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. And with that, I will turn it over to Scott, who has the one and only topic for today. Thank you. Um, so one is just starting to think about my post for CircuitPython 23, uh, 2023. I was just... Wanting, I, in the original post, I want to give a deadline. Last year and the years before, we've kind of like kicked it off, but not had an explicit deadline, um, which means that it's it's a little bit of pulling teeth to get people to write it, honestly. So I think that maybe in this kickoff post that I'm gonna uh, about to draft, I think it'd be good to include a like get your stuff in by this date. Um, so the summary last year went up February first, first. Um, but do any folks have opinions about how long should it be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? How long should it be open? Um, that sort of stuff. Any any thoughts? My gut says that two weeks is probably plenty. Um, I, I don't know if there are a lot of people who really like aren't around their computers or taking time to think about it during the first two weeks. One week I can see, oh, I've, I've got that week off, but I would think we would get the majority of the submissions we'd get within two weeks and then, mm -hmm. you know, not that lag of a whole month until we summarize and, and bring it together and you or somebody tries to synthesize, you know, what are the big themes. So two weeks sounds oh, good I to me. I gave up on that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did that one time. And I'm okay. Like, hey, this, no. All right. I'm not putting that on you then. You don't the, have to do no, that. The, summary, the summaries now are just like uh, a post that links to everybody's individual posts. Um, so I'm Wait. hearing two weeks. Hmm? 
All right. Yeah. Yeah. It by acclaim. It is two weeks. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll do because we have a meeting on the third, and then we have a meeting six days after that. So maybe I'll do two weeks from the third, which is like a we'll have a meeting the day before it closes, just as a final like tomorrow's the last day sort of thing. It'll be two weeks ish. All right. That would make it the seventeenth. Two, week, two weeks from our first meeting of the year. All right. One day it, after a final meeting is a good idea. Make it so. Yeah, and then the next week we can do the summary post. So, okay, cool. Thank you for the input on that. All we'll right. Draft it right now. Or nearly right now. And with that, we are ready to wrap up the meeting. This has been the Circuit Python Weekly for December 19, 2022. Thanks to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, as well as those of us that work on CircuitPython, please consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting is released on YouTube at youtube.com adafruit, and the podcast goes up on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Micro Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held hold it, wait for it, Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2023. There is no meeting the week of December 26th, and then uh, the next meeting is held one day later for the New Year's holiday, but we do hope to see you next year in 2023. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. There are folks in most every time zone in the world who are ready to talk about CircuitPython, about electronics, about Arduino, if you're into that. Um, so yeah, just drop by. It'll be buzzing over the holidays, even though a lot of us who are normally working aren't. There's a great community there ready to welcome you and talk to you and yeah, meet each other. Anyway, but back to the meeting. To be notified about this meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. That will get you a couple of role mentions every week uh, about when the meeting will be, links to the notes document so you can add your notes, as well as permission to speak in the voice channel during the meeting. So that's all good and you don't have to you know, have a long-term commitment to us to do that. It's, uh, you know, if it's of interest to you. And with that, I am about to close out this meeting. Um, thank you, and we hope to see you all next year on January 3rd. Have a great holiday.